Hi, I'm Dr. Philip McMillan, and I'm here just to give you a quick update on what is happening across the world with regards to COVID-19. And today I want to look at the decision by the FDA to change their recommendations for COVID-19 vaccines. What really have they said today in their latest news release? And I quickly compare it to what happened in Switzerland, who largely have stopped the vaccines. And you can see here, I have a slight asterisk, and I'll explain why that is there. Who really is following the science? Could they both be following the science yet have different outcomes? That's possible. But at this stage of the pandemic, is it just really more about politics than it is about science? That's the real challenge that we have to face. So let's get straight into the questions. So this here is the recommendation from the FDA. This is their news release. And critically, for immediate release, the 18th of April, 2023, that's today. And they have authorized changes to simplify the use of the bivalent mRNA COVID-19 vaccines. So critically, the first thing that you notice here is that different from what happened with regards to Switzerland, they are still encouraging the vaccine usage. Let's see exactly what they said and how does it compare to what happened with regards to Switzerland. So they have said at this stage of the pandemic, they support simplifying the use of mRNA bivalent COVID-19 vaccines. And they think that this will help encourage future vaccination. That's from Peter Marks. He is the director of FDA's Center for Biologics Evaluation and Research. They've said evidence is now available that most of the U.S. population, five years old of age and older, have antibodies to SARS-CoV-2. And this is from either vaccination or infection. And that's very similar to what had been said with regards to Switzerland. They found that 97% of their population had already had either antibodies to vaccination or infection. And that was their main criteria for determining that they should make changes to their rules. In the context of the United States, as we move along, they have continued to say we encourage individuals to consider staying current with vaccination, including with a bivalent COVID-19 vaccine. And again, in essence, what they're saying is that vaccination is still encouraged uh, across the population and they perceive that the benefits of redu reduction of severe COVID-19 outweighs any potential unknown or known risks with regards to COVID-19 vaccination. So how does that compare to Switzerland? And this is an important difference with regards to what they are saying. So in Switzerland, and this is taken from their Federal Office of Public Health, they made their changes probably about a week ago when I had covered it. And what they have said is that in principle, no COVID-19 vaccination is recommended for spring or summer of 2023. People at especially high risk can receive a vaccination following an individual consultation with their doctor. That's a huge difference. In effect, in Switzerland, they are not recommending further vaccination, even for people who are at high risk. And the last time I spoke about this, I made that error with regards to saying they were still recommending it for those who are high risk. But if you look carefully at their wording here, what applies to people at especially high risk? In principle, it is also not currently recommended for people at especially high risk to receive a COVID-19 vaccination. However, following an individual consultation with their doctor, they may then receive a vaccine. Very interesting. So in Switzerland, 
the responsibility for vaccination lies with the doctor in the United States, the responsibility lies with the individual. Very interesting difference. So in Switzerland, it's not that you can't do a vaccination. And of course, they also recommend the bivalent. And in order to understand the bivalent is where they have the original Wuhan strain with the Omicron BA4 or 5, and that's the bivalent vaccine as opposed to the monovalent, which only had the Wuhan strain. So that difference in terms of using the bivalent vaccine is the same across the board, but in Switzerland, it is not recommended. In the United States, it's encouraged. This is the question, who is right? Are they both right? Are they both wrong? How does this help in the context of where we are in terms of the pandemic. So I want to share with you a little drawing that I put together just before. And this is me just trying to get concepts so that people understand why it is that I emphasize that natural immunity is so important in terms of preventing severe disease. What I call natural mucosal immunity. <clears throat> There are two levels of protection. This is from any virus. And in this case, I've got here the SARS-CoV-2 virus. This is big, but here it's quite small. In reality, it would be much smaller than that. It goes into the airways and it would usually infect up here and then replicate and spread down into the lungs. Now, in order for the virus to be able to do that, it has to get past the mucosal, the lining of the upper airways barrier, which uses, and I've got it here in white, IgA antibodies. So these antibodies are therefore on the mucosal surface and they block the infection. However, suppose the virus was still able to get through this layer of protection it would then face the systemic immune system. That's what from the lymph nodes. All of these here are lymph nodes, and they are producing these red IgG antibodies, which would then bind the virus. The difference between mucosal immunity, which occurs naturally after an infection, often you can get not just this mucosal immunity, but also systemic immunity if virus had gone into the bloodstream. So you have two layers of protection. The difference with regards to an injectable vaccine is that the mechanism of creating these IgG antibodies that they measure in the bloodstream occurs primarily through the systemic system in the lymph nodes. It doesn't really have as much of an impact on mucosal immunity. And this is part of the reason why, even though the majority of some places in the world are vaccinated with injectable vaccines for COVID-19, we're still having circulating virus because this aspect of the immune system is not as well supported by an injection. However, they have seen a reduction in severe disease because of the response of the immune system to the antibodies against the spike protein. And that's the basics between the injectable vaccination and the mucosal natural immunity. One of the arguments is, is that we could have used mucosal vaccines to stimulate this area. And some areas are still looking at this. However, they have not yet fully come up with a formulation, except probably in China. And they did try their mucosal vaccines. I don't know what the outcomes of those were. However, you have to look at the fact that it seems that China has also overcome the pandemic. So whatever they did seems to also have worked. So this is the basics of what happens. And when they give the bivalent in the systemic system, you will have antibodies to the Wuhan and the 4 and 5, BA4 and 5 of Omicron. And that's the basics as to what is happening. The important point that I'm mentioning here is that we clearly have a difference as different countries start to take another approach to COVID-19. Who is following the science? Is it important to follow the science? 
it's at least important to explain what you understand and what the limitations are with regards to what you understand. Our big mistake, I think, in the pandemic has become that it is too important for leaders to be right all the time. And therefore, they are afraid to let the fact that science evolves become clear. And it's that evolution of understanding of the science that I'll continue to focus on, always making sure to keep you updated. So I hope you have a good evening and uh, look out and join me on Substack if you want to hear more posts, videos, and podcasts. Have a great evening.